Okay, so we're just on a roof with uh, with Ben, the apprentice, uh, and I was just teaching him about coping stones and um, parapet details and things like that. So I thought it was quite interesting. Um, you don't realise until you try teaching this stuff, you don't realise how much you, you know, how much you kind of know and how much um, how much goes into into roofs. Um, but yeah, so I'll just I'll just show you a bit about um, what I was telling him about coping stones. So on this roof. What we've got is they've done a, a liquid coating um, and you've got this um, felt flashing that they've put onto this um, onto the coping stones onto the parapet so the thing with coping stones is obviously the concrete so concrete is porous so and and, and then what you've got is these mortar joints so mortar is going to um, expand and contract it's going to shrink over time as well with the, with the freeze thaw cycle so you're going to end up with this cracking um, so obviously water can get down here and the thing with a with a, with a parapet as well and with a coping stone is it nine times out of ten it's over a cavity wall um, so you've got your brick on the inside your block on the out the, your block on the inside sorry your brick on the outside uh, and then you've got your cavity wall in between so you need something to bridge that cavity so the first thing that you need to look for is whether there is a DPC in place and we can see on this that there is if I get down here there's your DPC in place on and then these um, coping stones are bedded onto the top my preferred method um, is to actually remove these coping stones take the waterproofing up and over the cavity um, and then finish on the outside edge here with uh, with a trim of some kind of GRP edge trim or uh, even even a drip a welted drip or something like that the reason for that is that you're getting rid of the of the maintenance that's needed on these you're getting rid of the the risk of the the joints failing which they, which inevitably they do over time um like i say nine times out of ten on here what you're going to see is the joints have been painted or filled or something with some kind of mastic what you also see is that um again the contractors don't treat this right when it's when it does when it is leaking or it's, it's often at a point where it's blamed to be leaking um, <clears throat> so what you get is they just take the um, the felt or the waterproofing up and they just terminate it un underneath here but you can see what happens over time if you don't restrain it there with a termination bar termination strip or, or taking the waterproofing underneath um, it will eventually start to come away as the water drips off the, off the coping stones here Okay, so that's just a, a little bit of a, a lesson on uh, on concrete coping stones. Like I said, if you can get rid of them, it's probably my preferred method is to get rid of them. But there's times when you can't, so just bear that in mind uh, for the aesthetics. Uh, there's times on like grade two or heritage buildings, things like that, where those where those coping stones need to stay in place. So in that instance, obviously, we take the coping stones off, take the waterproofing underneath, and then rebed the coping stones on top. Again, that's a good robust detail that's going to last a few years but you are going to have that cement um, mortar that you need to uh, that's going to be a, a maintenance item okay we'll see you on the next one